Hello and welcome to PSM Speak. In our best practices series segment of the channel, we have been focusing on uh, the situations which uh, have been ideal, the instances, the replicable instances which are useful elsewhere. The people doing good things are in institutions. Today we are focusing on what makes a good teacher. Today we have identified Amar Godiseva. We have not identified him. In fact, we have asked his students, who is your good teacher? Then the response came from all his uh, students that Amar Bhaiya. We were surprised, what is this Amar Bhaiya? Is his name Amar Bhaiya? No. Amar insists that he shouldn't be addressed as Sir, a teacher, miss, madam, no. There starts how a teacher should behave with uh, the kids. He insists that he be called bhaiya, brother. We were impressed. And then we wanted to know from him what are his experiences, observations and what makes a good teacher. Before Amar speaking, what is the state of affairs? Actually, in this country, in the schools, we have with us Ms. Anuradha Rao, a child rights activist who has been struggling for the child rights for the past two and a half a decade. She has seen ghastly incidents, what's happening at the school, torture of kids, physically and mentally. First, let us listen to Anuradha Rao to show us what is exactly happening at the schools, the situation, what it is. Then we will hear Amar Godiseva, what it ought to be. And now, Anuradha Rao. I have been working for the child rights for the past two and a half decades. I have observed countless horrid incidents at schools, neither the school management nor the governments are able to control the brutality of some teachers. The teachers make kids stand in hot sun even if they come two minutes late. There were instances of breaking the limbs of kids. They twist the hands, beat the kids till they bleed, kick in the ribs make them walk on their palms. There were instances of piercing the tender hands with pins and pencils. Make them stand on knees for hours together. Make them stand on bench. Make the girls slap boys. Mentally torture the kids. Sexually harass the girls. There were instances of rape school teachers. A small appeal. Can the political parties assure that they will end this inhumanity? Heinous crimes against hapless children. Can't they promise to ensure teaching the kids with love and affection without hurting them? physically and mentally. That is the state of affairs. What is the government has been doing? Is it indifferent? Can't it discipline the teachers who have been perpetrating heinous crimes unending, unabated? How should we take this? As opposed to this disgusting scenario, there are good teachers like Amar Godiseva. Now Amar Godiseva. During my younger days, I was not a good student. I used to fail in English. I used to fail in math. So one day I went to my sir and I asked him, hey, I'm not a good student. I'm not scoring well. And my sir laughed at me and he said that, Amar, there is no bad student. There is only bad teacher. That confused me. So I went and I asked my math sir and my English teacher, are you bad teachers? But later when I came into this teaching fraternity, I understood that there is no good teacher, bad teacher again. There is only good teaching and bad teaching. Unfortunately, when we talk about our Indian curriculum, uh, when we talk about the Indian schools, 
most of the focus is given to how much a child learns how much the teacher teaches rather than what they learn what they teach and how they learn and how they teach the basic problem in the indian education system is we don't focus on how the children should learn the teachers are not given the freedom or not given the kind of training or the direction on how they can teach the children better in the classroom that is where is lacking right now um, basically let's say majority of the classrooms mostly focus on what the children are learning and how much they are learning just bombarding them with everything i mean the children don't understand whether why they are learning that what is the purpose of that what they are learning in their life how is it going to be useful to them because the teacher is directly focusing on more than how they learn like just the grades and the marks that is where the disconnection is happening the need of the r is to focus more on how the teacher teaches in the classroom so the teachers today should not focus on whether the child can read whether the child can write whether the child can memorize no the learning must happen now what is learning uh, we basically say the four c's number 1 communication skills this generation requires the first c that is how to communicate with their peers in the social world right uh, they need to know what to talk how to talk how to share their ideas their emotions this is a problem that most of this particular generation is facing that they don't understand their own sense while uh, i mean they don't know about themselves instead they go commenting around they talk about other people so well that communication skills are important not just for that the other reason is if they want to work with the others if they want to come together and work with the other people talking and sharing their ideas is way more important number 2 collaboration they should learn to collaborate with a group of people and work together when we were young we were taught that first rankers are the best students and that they should only lead and they are individual no that's not the way this generation works and the teacher should ensure that this collaboration happens in the classroom number 3 critical thinking that is way more important in this generation the learning of this generation is not about memorizing it's about learning in the sense learn unlearn and relearn children of this generation should be able to learn something then unlearn it and relearn it so if they have to think critically if they have to solve problems critically they should know when to learn when to unlearn it and learn something new because the technology is changing the world is changing rapidly and last but not the least the fourth one creativity is the key for this generation to grow whatever the technology devices that you see all the way from the apple iphone or uh, whether you see samsung we are creativity is the key for the next generation to grow and these four are the skills that the teacher should focus on in the classroom but above all that she should understand the psychology of the children that is there in the classroom she is whether it is a he or a she who is teaching in a class she should understand or he should understand that they are dealing with maybe 30 or 40 different mindsets different ideologies different creativities and obviously they are all in an unknown place and you need to bring them from an unknown to known so instead of focusing on just how much they are learning for start focusing on what they are learning and how they are learning what you are teaching on how you are teaching and connect these four skills creativity communication collaboration and this critical thinking in a classroom and if the teacher can engage them automatically the class will be a wonderful class unfortunately of this generation again the teachers are more focused on rote learning that memorizing let's come out of that and if we can do that i think we can create a wonderful generation i always believe that the school is a second home for a child i mean when they come to school it's it should be a happy learning environment for them i mean definitely the school is a place where they get to explore the world where they get to connect to the world whether it be a language whether it be science or social or math it should be a fun place so me when i was a teacher before i became a teacher when i was a student i hated school because school was like a chore for me it was like going and doing some sort of a job and some task but when i became a teacher i wanted the children to enjoy whatever it is that they are learning so the first and the foremost that i always ensured is i always have a smiling and a happy face in front of the children because they must always feel accepted they must always feel welcomed they must understand that the world is a welcoming place before they start learning about the world and the second thing is never ever share with the child that whatever they are learning is a difficult thing if we should always start telling the children that the world is such a beautiful place and a simple place and all they need to just 
get into that and that's what i always did as a teacher and that's what i always encourage the teachers to do as well because children are they were just born they just came into the world even they want to explore the world just and they are very curious as well and we need to encourage them to do that so let's make the subjects fun rather than making it more difficult or rather than making it more complicated let's just dissect it and make it simple for them to learn i think that's what my mantra has been and it worked out so well thank you amar it's a bit reassuring that there are teachers like you now this is the election season the politicians are promising more to the electorate they are addressing the issues of everybody every segment of the society poor youth unemployed and everybody but not children our future because they might feel they are voiceless and they do not have a vote to cast who should demand justice for the children who should ensure the child rights this channel demand request appeal to all the political parties please include child rights issue assure us that we are going to teach this kids without the torture without torturing them physically and mentally thank you thank you anuradha rao thank you amar gudi seva thank you very much for watching this video so patiently